Aloha, namaste. This is Alexis Cox with Radha Home Yoga, and I'm here to bring you the full moon forecast for today, Tuesday, April 7th. It's going to be at 7.35 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, when the moon and sun will be directly across from each other. So our sun has um, come to the final part of Pisces. It's at 24 degrees Pisces, and we are... Um, having our moon exactly opposite. So this cycle we've been in has been the the Piscean cycle, the cycle where we're sort of lost in the watery emotional realm, specifically the, the spiritually inclined watery emotional realm. So not so much attachment to others as much as our fantasies or our projections or, um, you know, depending on where you are in your life and where you are on your path, um, perhaps getting more absorbed into your spiritual practices and to getting lost in meditation, to getting lost in the, the mantras, to um, you know merging with source in whatever way that you, you are able to do that. So it's a very, um, you know, it's, a, it's a very much a cycle where we haven't been very present with the details. And that's been, you know, there's been other ways where we have been very present with the details with Saturn in Capricorn and, and Mars in Capricorn and now Jupiter there as well. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But the overall cycle has been this sort of dreamy Piscean cycle. And um, the full moon is where we always sort of see the opposite energy come out. Like we're trying to balance ourselves. We've been in this space of, of you know, la-di-da, and now we wanna like focus on the details. And Virgo is very much where we are um, wanting to categorize, make things right or wrong, true, and put them in different categories. You know, this is blue, this is yellow, this is purple. We're wanting everything to be organized and neat and um, have a place, have a specific place that it's supposed to be. And that is complicated and hard, especially in this current cycle we're in. Um, if you haven't had a chance to, to check out the video I did with, uh, with my teacher, Sam Jeppy, you can watch that a little bit more about the um, Kala Sarpa yoga that we're in right now. But we're in a period of time where delusion and illusion, especially around Mercury type things, and Mercury's the ruler of Virgo, so especially around information, especially around communication, facts, details, all of these things that Virgo loves, we're, we're very confused. It's all delusion, none of it's fact. It's just this like mass outpouring of information that really very little is based on anything that anyone actually knows. So the fact that there's all this sort of, there, there's hidden and mysterious elements for sure, but there's also just confusion. Like it's not that, you know, it's not necessarily so nefarious as being hidden as much as it is just nobody really knows what the heck is going on. And as a result of that, everybody wants to project what they think is going on. And so there's a lot of information out there and it's very hard to categorize. Um, there's a lot of cross paths of, you know, maybe generally speaking, this ideological sect believes this and this ideological sect believes this and this, you know, normally maybe it's easier to say this is like this, this is right wing information, this is left wing information, or this is this. But right now that's not actually even possible. It, there's so many places that things are crossing and uncrossing that categorizing is particularly challenging at this time. Also, of course, we're in the middle of a health crisis. We're in the middle of a situation where germs are like our biggest fear. Well, Virgo is always scared of germs. This is where we're always wanting to keep ourselves pure and clean. You see people who have strong Virgo um, alignments in their chart, like they either have a lot of planets there or they have their rising sign or their moon there. They have a tendency to want to keep themselves clean anyway and maybe keep a little distance from other people anyway. So the alignment is quite perfect actually for where we're at right now this realization of like wow you know um maybe i've been wanting to still hang out with friends or maybe i've been wanting to do whatever but actually i really want to keep myself clean and pure and i don't want to get sick because virgo is the natural sixth house it's where we tend towards illness it's a vulnerability towards disease and as a result a strong bent towards healing disease and preventing it and it's an earth sign. There's a lot of plant energy, like plant medicines, um, Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, Western herbalism, all these different things can be very strong um, in, in a Virgo native. And for all of us right now in this, in this full moon, um, it's, a, it's a time to really take charge of your health. 
because you are vulnerable, you need to do all you can to keep yourself from getting sick and also heal yourself if you feel off, if you feel un imbalanced. And so using plant medicine, using um, just time even in the earth at all, time around plants, um, around greenery can be very healing. Uh, if you have any capacity to you know, take on other modalities as well, such as yoga, it might be harder to get a massage right now or acupuncture or something like that because of the, of the social distancing rules. But if you happen to have someone in your family or that you live with that does those kind of things, you can, you can work on each other. And there's a lot of ways to self um, self massage using if you don't have massage balls you can use um, or yoga balls you can use tennis balls um, things like that underneath your back as you're laying on your yoga mat um, I'm offering free yoga classes right now as are many many other teachers so you can um, you know get those also if you're just registered to get astrology reports you can sign up um, on the little survey that I have and sign that you also want yoga information because then I'll send you those classes um, and it's just, it, it's a good time to really just take stock of your own state of health and to really start to purify your diet and your, um, you know, if you take supplements and things like that, just really start to up your game so that you can prevent yourself from being sick and not just with COVID-19, but it's still cold and flu season. We've just had another bout of cold here. It started raining for another week in California. So we're, we're having trouble moving out of the regular cold flu season already. Um, so just keeping ourselves healthy, as healthy as we can. Um, you know, using masks around is awkward and weird, but it's something that everyone, if everyone does it, then we're, we're all keeping ourselves a little bit safer. Um, and there's lots of cute new designs and things like that, and people who are crafty are making masks for people, so that's another option. Um, but for sure, this is a time when we can really focus on our health and healing, and that's awesome. Chitra, the specific nakshatra, the specific star in Virgo that this is falling in, um, it shares between Virgo and Libra, and it is a star of, of design and beauty. And it has a lot of spiritual qualities to it as well, but it is most... Um, most specifically, it's ruled by Vishwakarma. So it's, it's the divine architect of the universe. He who, you know, cast all the different structures that we live within in, in all three worlds. And it's a, um, it's a sort of, there's a magical quality where there's a capacity to sort of erect this, you know, beautiful ways of, of doing things and especially in the Virgo part of it where it's it's more physical and more um, practical there's there's a lot of capacity to set up systems that that work for you you know maybe just in your own home because that might probably be where you are right now um, just you know finding ways to make the staying at home with your family work you know different different systems that can can be beautiful and also very functional um, the you know the divine architect created a lot of the weapons of the gods like indra's thunderbolt was created by by um vishvakarma and these are weapons that are used to help bring balance back into the world so when the asuras when these demons get out of control and start to take too much power which incidentally happens as a result of uh, more often than not, strong tapasya, strong practices they do in order to get something. So their ego is completely driving the game and they do these you know, austere yogic practices to get something. So not just to do them, but in order to achieve strength, right? Um, suppleness, um, invincibility is really what they're looking for. This desire to be invincible and immortal is always what they want. And then the gods will come and give them boons, usually Shiva or Brahma, and the boons will be, you know, related to living forever. The, the, the Asura, the demon, will always want to live forever. And the overarching deity, be it Shiva, be it Brahma, will say, well, I can't do that. I can't give you immortality. But what I can do is give you this, you know, version of that where only one person can kill you and that person doesn't even exist, you know, like a seven-year-old boy or, or oh, no man can kill you, but of course a woman still can. So th things like that. There's always a caveat. There's always a way 
to to get the balance back into the into the worlds. Um, but I, I think it's interesting to note that that it more often than not comes from this over desire to do practices because of egoic reasons. And the reason I bring that up is because a lot of people do yoga in the West for egoic reasons, and also probably in India at this point as well, where there's a goal in mind called, I wanna be stronger, I wanna be more flexible, I wanna have a beautiful body, or I, you know, even I want to attain that pose is pretty egoic. Like, I, you know, I really need to be able to do this, that, or the other is, is a very um, egoic place to come from. And too much of that leading the boat is what brings us individually off balance, right? So these stories, these depictions are very much um, on the different levels. There's the big universal vision of that and how it plays out in the world at large. And then there's how it plays out for us individually. And we are um, each part Asura, part Deva, these you know beings who are trying to just move towards peace and, and um, godlike qualities. And then what we really are as human. So we're, we have both of those qualities. And the more we focus on things that come to us for, for greed or for, you know, desire and for things that are not coming from a pure place, the more we're sort of feeding that dog, the more we're creating more of that, not just in ourselves and in balancing ourselves, but in the world at large. So when we work with Virgo energy, one of the things that we have to think about is how focused on the details Virgo can be. Virgo can be con entirely caught up so much in the details that it's unable to see the bigger picture at all. It's completely like, I need to do this thing in front of me right now, I need to do it perfectly. And if I don't do it perfectly, then you know there's this sort of self-effacing um, quality in Virgo where we're, we're constantly criticizing ourselves for not doing it perfect enough. And then we, of course, turn that out to our partners or other people in our world also who are also not doing it perfect enough. And the overarching goal is to be pure. That's really what we want is to be pure. But of course, purity is gonna come from an internal place. It's gonna come from something that we are um, spiritually experiencing through our heart space, through that um, moving of the energy up the chakras into the higher elevated energies. It's not gonna be something that we get because we cleaned ourselves really well, right? It's not, um, it's not something you can, you can clean all the dirt on the outside of something, but the inside of it can still be quite impure. So it's, it's not a, um, it, it, it's a holistic thing. We have to clean ourselves, yes, on the outside. We need to keep ourselves as pure as we can on the outside, keep our physical bodies in positive shape so that we can possibly sit with our internal self. If we're uncomfortable or we're, you know, we don't smell good and we're, you know, our stomach has all these weird things going on because we ate a bunch of disgusting food, it's going to be very hard to sit and purify our internal self. But if all you focus on is that external purification, your internal part is, is never really going to um, be integrated. And so this full moon cycle is a chance for us to integrate a little bit more. We've been focusing on the bigger picture with Pisces and maybe on our, our own, you know, uh, spiritual self and getting lost in fantasy land. Now we're going to focus more on the details and um, on this purification and health and healing. And I, and I see a lot of people stepping up into that space if they haven't already been there. So if you haven't already been really consciously taking care of your health um, and, and maybe practicing the social distancing or the quarantine, stuff like that, then you're more likely to do that now. Um, the... Uh, the other thing I wanted to say about Chitra is Chitra is where we're where we stand out. It's it's literally depicted by a gem um, or a pearl sometimes, and it's this it's this um, shining shiningness within us where we we can't hide, where we're not hiding, where we're seen, and so it's also a good time for you to be seen. That means if you need to. Um, speak up in whatever that looks like if it's your family unit if it's your job if it's you know i know a lot of jobs right now people who are still working whether they're working remotely or having to go into work are actually cutting pay um or, or things like that even in the hospital system they're doing that because um the 
the elective surgeries that are, have all been canceled actually pay the majority of the hospital's bills. So everybody's sort of struggling financially right now, and I'm gonna talk about Jupiter and Capricorn in a minute, but this sort of miserly quality that might have come about is, is an opportunity um, for those who have less power or who are more easily taken advantage of because they just generally do what they need to do, like you know, maybe even in a household that could be like a mother who just takes on more responsibility and does more. It is important to be seen and to use this time that you are seen to not only get, you know, acknowledgement for what you do, but also perhaps get some something that you need out of that. Like if it's not working for you, it's a time to create a new system that does work for you. It's a time to tell your boss, yes, I'm, I'm sorry that you're hurting financially, but I'm putting myself at risk you know, coming into work every day, so I need to receive more compensation. Or I'm, you know, working remotely and you've just cut, cut my pay in half, so I'm going to cut my hours in half. You know, whatever it is that you need to do in order to make it work for you. And sort of um, using that, that um, illusory quality, which is there because the other side of Vishvakarma, the other side of the architecture of the divine is also the architecture of the asuras is is like maya and the illusion and so there's the potential to create an illusionary situation um, that's coming from deceit and there's a potential to create new structures and things that are helping so we all have that span within our capacity but if you use the potential to create something beautiful in a positive way and you get your own needs met which also have to be met and as we move our moon is going to go from chitra virgo to chitra libra and move into libra for the next few days focus on compromise will be very high we also have venus having just moved into zone sign of taurus so it rules libra and it also rules taurus so we're in a state where we're more open to getting along we're more open to wanting everyone's needs to be met. Taurus is where we're really focused on our material needs. We're focused on our need for money. We're focused on our need for the things that money buys, like you know, food and um, shelter and, and maybe even you know, clothes and, and stuff like that. But we're, in, we're focused on our needs being met and we're focused on them being met in a nice way, in a way that's not going to stomple anyone else or take away from what they need, um, and also in a way that feels good to us. So we're actually enjoying our food, and we're actually enjoying maybe taking baths and um, cl you know, cleaning our house, but in a way that feels beautiful to us. How can we create more beauty? So this will be strongly supported, as, as not just today, but as we go into the next, um, couple days when the moon's in Libra. And then of course the moon will move into Scorpio and be debilitated and you might have some emotional chaos going on. But it's always good to sort of take advantage of, of the moments that you have and to um, step into them. The moon is changing every day. So that's why our emotional state is so unstable because we're always moving through. Even if it's in the same sign as it was yesterday, it's in a different star. And that means a different type of energy. So this is kind of, um, an awareness that your your emotional state is not and never really going to be super stable unless you have a really stable moon in your chart but even then the one in the sky is always moving and you're having to deal with everyone else's energy you're you're not ever going to be totally stable there so you have to stabilize yourself from other places and um, the reason that the moon is exalted in Taurus is because it is such a stable sign it's a place where we really focus on um, making our needs met and because Venus is in her own sign right now, we really have an opportunity to do that through relationships with other people. Um, so working together on the garden to grow the food, to cook it, to eat it, to share it as a family and enjoy it. We need to eat, but can it be also beautiful and harmonious? Does it, you know, does it have to be this sort of chaotic free-for-all? And right now people have a lot more time, so they're spending a lot more time on these kind of things that maybe were a little bit of a you know, fast quick, just get it done thing before. Um, so we also have the a couple other planets that have just moved since my last um, forecast. However, I have done a couple um, updates 
both on Facebook and Instagram. So if you're not following me on Facebook and Instagram, you should go ahead and do that. It's uh, Radha Home Yoga. And on Instagram, there's an underscore between home and yoga. Um, and then on, and on Facebook, there's not. And then also, um, I just did this interview with my teacher, Sam, um, who we put it up on his YouTube, but I have the link on my site as well. And this can really go much more into detail into these transits that we're, that we're in right now because we talked about the whole scope of it. The Kala Sarpa Yoga that I was talking about a little bit earlier, which is sort of the focus of, our, our, of me and Sam's talk, but we kind of went off in all different directions, um, is where the North Node and the South Node have all the planets between them. So all the planets are, are stuck between the North and South Node of the Moon. The nodes of the Moon are the eclipse points. So they are where eclipses are going to happen whenever we have full and new moons in those spots during this cycle. And that started in March of 2019. So we've been in this Gemini Sagittarius cycle for a while now. And you can see, focus on information, focus on facts, and pulling away from the beliefs and the ideals and the things in Sagittarius. Now, the problem is we need both of these. We need this to be a functioning axis. And right now, it's it's blowing up the ways in which it's a non-functioning axis. Our beliefs and ideals largely drive what information we believe, what information we're even willing to look at and take in. There's so much information available with the World Wide Web that it's just a mass and you have such a range of truth to delusion and the authorities want to sort of step in and say, well, we'll take out everything that's spam, but it's like, well, okay, that's censorship and, and you are creating a lot of the spam, you know, the, the government is not a source most of us trust to give us completely clean information. So that's not really, fa Facebook is definitely not who we trust to be choosing our information um, for us. So, you know, this sort of idea of taking out fake news is, it's, compelling on one hand to, you know, to reduce the, the misinformation, but on the other hand, it's like, well, who is, who's sifting through this to decide for us, you know, and what are the, what are the barometers on that? So we are in an age of misinformation. We're in an age, uh, my, my teacher said it very well, we're in a propaganda age. We are in an age of propaganda. So it is a time when everybody and everything is saying things from their own perspective. Even me, right? We're all saying things coming from our own experience. What we've learned up to this point in our lives is the information we're willing to take in and then also put out again. The stronger your mercury, the more you're willing to take in a wider range of information and the more you're willing to really discern what's true and what's not true. Right now, collectively, we all have a rather weak Mercury. <laughs> and unfortunately, the Rahu end in Gemini is what is leading this Kalasarpa Yoga. So it's the flood of information that's actually leading the way here. Our just wanting to take in, take in, take in, take in all this information and not assimilate it at all is what's leading the Kalasarpa Yoga. The part that we're missing is where we actually assimilate it and distill it into a belief into something that means something. And of course, we already have our old beliefs, K2, the South Node in Sagittarius. We already have these age-old beliefs that we've had forever since we were born, since we were raised, since we you know, started coming up with beliefs ourselves. All the different ways we get our beliefs are already there and they're already based on faultiness. Every one of us has beliefs that have some fault based in them, based in our own experience, based in your experience as a woman, based in your experience as a man, based in your experience living in America, based in your experience living in Chile, based in your experience, whatever your experience is, you have a bent on it and you don't have all the information. You can't, nobody can. The only way we could have all the information is if we all share the information which is what we're doing, but we're doing it in a way where it's like propaganda, trying to convince you of my opinion, and this is my opinion. This is how the facts line up to support my opinion. It doesn't matter that these aren't really facts, and it doesn't matter that my opinion is based on a bias I learned when I was five, and I have no idea that I even have that unconscious bias, but this is the truth, you know, and then someone else is really susceptible to that truth, so they take that truth, but then they mill it around in their own reality and pass it on, and it becomes this giant game of telephone where we're all just passing information, and none of it is really um, super founded. So our own capacity to really sit within ourselves and sit with ourselves and know that all the real truths are eternal. Real truth is eternal. It's never 
It's never based on time and circumstance. If you can sit on your mat, on your chair, on whatever you can sit on, and take a few moments every day to check in with yourself, hopefully before you turn on your phone and start seeing all this stuff, then you can kind of really allow yourself to be your own barometer for what's coming at you. You can maybe make more conscious choices about what you even allow yourself to take in, and you can make more conscious choices about what you need to desperately go tell somebody else, because we have this tendency to want to share. But if we're sharing something and we don't really know what we're talking about, it's probably not the best thing to share. Of course, now with the share button <laughs> on Facebook, it's really easy to share. It's like, oh, I like this. Oh, I like this. Oh, I like this. This fits in my worldview. I'll, I'll pass this up. And it can give a lot of validation to other people. Um, like, oh yeah, I feel that way too. Oh, look, there's more people on my team. But then it also creates all these divisions where it's like, I don't agree with that. Okay, I don't even like that person anymore. And people start unfriending each other and creating all this chaos. So it's important to check in with yourself every day so that your choices are not coming from this sort of irrational emotional place, which they will be because Mercury is in Pisces. And Mercury has just moved into Pisces. It's at this full moon. It's at one degree. So it's, it's moving in and it's um, going to get worse before it gets better because Mercury's point of debilitation in Pisces is actually midway through. So we have like a week and a half before we start really getting into the like super confusion state. And that just means that it's better to spend your time doing things that are not meant to be super factual. So like there's this friend that I have who's telling this amazing story right now online every day a little bit of the story in front of his campfire that he builds like listening to mythology and stories that's a wonderful way to activate your brain in a way where you can take in deeper bigger truths without it being having to be factual reading in general read stories read things maybe not even nonfiction right now like don't read the New York Times read a book you know, this is a time to allow your brain that freedom to kind of roam in the creative realm. Write a book if you feel like you have that part of you that really wants to write. Um, it's, it's, you know, a wonderful time, again, for spiritual practices and things like that. But if we don't engage our brain in those kind of ways, then it's going to go in another direction. We're just going to take in more of this information. It's really hard not to just constantly, you know, read more information on COVID. And then um, the other end of that is, of course, just chilling out and watching show after show after show um, and, and sort of zoning out your brain. But that's not just zoning out your brain because, of course, those shows all have a lot of information they're giving you, too. So it's, it's important to take stock of what you're allowing in right now, I guess, is my biggest, my biggest point in that. And Mercury will be debilitated for a few weeks and will, um, you know, have, have that sort of lack of... of discernment. Jupiter is also debilitated now. Jupiter moved into Capricorn and I did do an update about this on Facebook and Instagram but not not through my email list. Um, uh, just just last week Jupiter moved into Capricorn and we now have two planets debilitated and they're unfortunately the planets that sort of work with our intelligence. Um, Jupiter is our belief system and our capacity to take in good teachings, have wisdom. It's also our government and the um, laws that get made as, as a result of that government, you know. So there's, there's an official end to Jupiter as well. It could be your guru teaching you, but it can also be, you know, a third grade teacher, and it can also be children who teach us so much. So if you are quarantined with a child right now, I'm sure you're learning a lot about yourself, probably more than they've ever learned in their classroom. Um, Jupiter and Capricorn, unfortunately, brings about a stern quality to that teaching. So you become more oppressed because there's this like constriction and this fear that's leading our inspiration, that's leading our ideals, that's leading our capacity to uh, be wise, literally. So with that constriction and that fear, we're more likely to take like more constrictive and authoritarian rules, which is kind of what's probably happening right now. Um, but we're also more likely to think that they're good. We're more likely to like want them 
because we feel unsafe ourselves. So our belief systems are all stemming from fear, not just the governing bodies, but our own. And because Mars is there, we're going to see that there's more enforcement of that, more enforcement of those laws. Maybe for now it's been sort of a suggestion to do something, but it's going to start to be more like a law to do something um, or a maybe not a law, but a, a, a rule that's in place right now for this specific time. You can see that happening. Um, Jupiter, though, being debilitated has a, a leg up, a hand up, actually two hands up, because we have Mars, exalted, join Jupiter, and that's what we call Nietzsche Bunga, where the debilitated planet is getting help from an exalted planet. And then we also have Saturn in Capricorn giving its own energy, being the, the landlord of that house, is also considered um, something to help the debilitated planet. And so we see that with planet in its own sign, Saturn, exalted planet Mars, and debilitated Jupiter, through the action of Mars, through the capacity to have um, you know, a long-term game plan that Capricorn brings, and to really focus on the physical action that needs to take place to make that end get met, we have a lot of intelligence operating there. We have our action planet Mars just doing what needs to be done in a specific direction, funneling all that passion, all that stuff that can be anger and other signs that has a place to go in Capricorn. And then we have Saturn, which has like very real fear, fear that's based on a truth, a truth, a truth called we will all die one day. And right now maybe death is more, more likely than at other times. So that truth, that hard, cold fact gives us a, a sense of dispassion where we are less attached to life itself and maybe more able to be um, like alone and meditating and solitary in our thoughts and feelings, even if we're not physically alone. Um, more like cold about death not in a bad way, but just in a way where we're more accepting of death, we're more accepting that it's there. And a lot of people are passing right now, not from COVID. There's been, an, I, I cannot even tell how many people I've had personally of my friends lose somebody in the last two weeks. Um, I would say probably about 15 people I know have lost at least one person. Some of them have lost two and none have been from COVID. They've all been from mostly old age, mostly just being old. Um, you know, maybe a specific problem within that being old, but m primarily people who, who you could say maybe were on their way out anyway. Um, so this is a time when we're more accepting of death. Now there's that coldness of the fact that we can't go to funerals, we can't cheer each other up and spend time as family the way we normally would when somebody passes. Um, we can't honor them the way we normally would when someone passes, but we have this acceptance of of the fact that it it is literally what it is. One day we will all die and this day was their day. Um, so that awareness, that intelligence that we have through Saturn and Mars is helping Jupiter be more wise. It's not giving Jupiter the inspiration and hope that it's lacking in, in Capricorn. What it's doing is showing a different way. It's showing through physical action and through humility and through proper fear how, how you know, what um, what good teachings or what good wisdom can look like through a roundabout fashion. So it's not coming from the inspiration itself, it's coming from seeing results from these other things and then being like, okay, well that's working. You know, that, that's working for now. Um, there will be a period at the end of May, well actually like mid-May where Jupiter goes retrograde and we see ourselves starting to question that and starting to, to say, hmm, was, you know, were we agreeing to good things? Was this smart? You know, is our constrictive energy intelligent? But for the time being, that's where we're at. And it also brings up, since I mentioned earlier, it brings up a little bit of a miserly quality because Jupiter is where we're generous and expansive, also with money and um, lucky with money. And Jupiter and Capricorn can be a little bit more penny pinching and like, well, I need this money for down the hall and it's very practical, very utilitarian and not as generous, not as magnanimous. So you might see that it's a little bit more harder for people doing donation based things to, you know, to receive the money they need or this time when you, you know, you need to ask for money because money's being taken from you. All of a sudden you're working in the midst of a pandemic and you're, you're actually having your money taken from you, that kind of thing um, can, can happen. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, I think for right now, that's uh, enough. I don't want to overwhelm anyone with, with information. Um, 
but I do also want to say that the um, the sun is going to be moving into Aries in a week so before I do my next report um, and it's going to be exalted there so we'll start to feel our own sense of power really stepping up where we're able to lead at least in our own little world and start to, to you know make decisions for ourselves in a, in a sort of executive manner where we can decide and if we have family and stuff like that we can do that too where we step into our power so that is going to be a very strong positive for us um, too here in this in this um, weird cycle we're in <laughs> um, this full moon also um, has a drishti a gaze an energetic gaze from two planets so I just wanted to also add that on really quick um, Jupiter is giving his gaze to the moon in Virgo and the degrees are um, let's see the degrees are pretty far for both of these of these energetic gazes so that's why I kind of didn't really mention them before but Jupiter's at just at one degree in in Capricorn and Mercury the other one is also just at one degree in Pisces so they're pretty far because the moon's at 24 um, but we do have that the um, ruler of the moon the ruler of Virgo gazing at it in its state of debilitation and Jupiter being debilitated in Capricorn giving its gaze as well. So that gives kind of e uh, even less like wisdom and even less intelligence and discernment around that Virgo energy. So while it's a really good time to take on all the healing practices and stuff like that, you can be aware that you might get lost in like a little bit of a rabbit hole of what you should be doing to purify and to heal and to keep yourself safe. Um, it can it can be easy to kind of take in everything or nothing and not necessarily make super um, super wise choices in that so it's good to just follow whatever path you had prior to all of this if you you know whatever your regimen was before um, you can you can stick with that or you can find somebody that you really trust who can offer you a really basic one but I wouldn't go out and just you know get everything that you hear is good because some things do not work well with each other so you kind of want to stay in a system a little bit as much as possible um, be it traditional Chinese medicine be it Ayurveda um, or be it Western you know Western herbalism you you really kind of want to make sure that what you're doing works with each other and you're not kind of in this chaotic mess of just trying to heal yourself and trying to purify yourself in, in a you know crazy crazy swarm um, I actually do have a a Thing that I set out um, it's an ebook and it's a system that I created for mothers before any of this pandemic came out um, to help them in a daily routine help them get back their daily routine that's so often lost when you are a mother um, and it's really focused on getting them back to doing yoga again every day but there's tips from Ayurveda in there that I do every single day and all throughout the winter, the fall, the spring, maybe a little bit in the summer I don't do as much, but basic protocol to just keep me and my son from getting sick um, and keeping our energy always moving. So whatever we have is constantly flowing out of us again. So these practices are really helpful. And if you are interested, um, you can check that out. It's the five uh, simple practices to get you back on your yoga mat. I hope that this full moon meets you well. Um, oh, I forgot to tell the Hanuman Jayanti story. So I'm actually going to tell this story in my yoga class. Um, so I'm going to just tell a short, a short story, a short version of it now um, in honor of Hanuman, who's one of my favorite deities. He's the monkey deity. And what I love about the story is how it begins with this, this sage who's meditating. And he's meditating by a pool and, or, you know, a lake, a pond, and in a tree. And this Aspara, this beautiful celestial being, is horsing around. She's having fun. She's playing. She's dancing with this Gandharva, this musician. They're splashing in the water. They're making a lot of noise. And they're disrupting this sage from his, um, from his you know, meditation. And he's a sage that looks like a monkey. And so the Aspara makes fun of him. And he keeps telling her to be quiet. And finally... He decides to curse her and he curses her to becoming a monkey on earth and she immediately drops down and becomes a monkey on earth and has to deal with this new horrendous experience of being furry being on you know 
having a long tail, being a monkey, climbing trees, has to learn how to feed herself, and all of these different things. And she becomes very devotional, she becomes very spiritual, and she prays every day by a body of water that is the Ganga. And she um, wants to, you know, go back to heaven. <laughs> she wants to go back to being an Aspara. Um, but she sort of moves beyond that egoic desire for herself and just wants to be of service. You know, she, feel, she, she feels like she was just being silly before and wasn't really being purposeful and now she wants to be of service. And one day when she's got her um, hands in a, <laughs> lift them up, she has her, her hands open, she's by the river, the wind comes by and drops something into her hands. And she is then um, like, you know, sort of has this blessed experience where she feels herself become exalted in some way. And she hears from the wind, you know, eat some of this, eat some of this pudding that's in her hands. So she eats a bit, a bit of the pudding and she, um, and she becomes pregnant. And this is the pregnancy with Hanuman. The rest of the pudding has actually gone and been given to the father that will become the father and um, of Ram, of the god Ram and his brothers. So there he has three mothers or three wives and he gives them each some of the pudding. And then the one mother ends up with the, you know, with Ram, who's the most deity of Vishnu. And then the other, brothers become twins and, and lesser, they have less amount of the pudding in them or less amount of, of God in them. Um, but then the rest of the pudding comes over here and gets made into Hanuman who becomes an incarnation of Shiva, of the god Shiva. And the curse that had been sort of amended when she was originally turned into a monkey and brought down to earth, the uh, sage said that when Shiva, when she brings an incarnation of Shiva to earth, she will get to go back to heaven. So it's this, you know, this caveat in her curse because the, the sage felt bad for cursing her. But unfortunately, whenever they do put out a curse, they can't ever take it back. They have to sort of just amend it. So not only do the demons get boons for doing exercises and meditations and, and austerities, practicing austerities, um, the sages who are supposed to be working towards being these you know pure beings are often very upset by people bothering them during meditation and they drop curses on people like pff, all over the place and then they kind of sometimes feel bad and want to take it back a little bit so that's another interesting aspect this sort of good and evil that we live in in the western world is really different it's really fluid in the vedic system there's a lot of um of nuance to it because we all have these different aspects within us um, and they're always at play. So anyway, uh, Hanuman gets born and the wind god Vayu was the one who carried this pudding to, um, to this beautiful Anjani and she has, she has Anjaneya is his original name, Hanuman's original name, so she births him and then he goes off and has all of his adventures where he becomes um, the hero in the Ramayan. So that's sort of his birth story and I'm gonna tell it at the end of my yoga class um, more like an enchanted story, um, but I, I did want to add that on here. So this is um, in honor of his birthday. And in India, it's the 8th today, so it's not the 7th. So you'll see a lot of places it'll say April 8th is, is Hanuman Jayanti, but um, the full moon is the, is the celebration and it is the full moon on the 7th here in the US. So I hope this meets you well and you have a wonderful full moon and Hanuman Jayanti, and I wish you the courage. Um, that Hanuman offers us and the um, devotion above all because that that surrender to something other than ourselves is really what what makes our choices come from a place of wisdom the, the less we're focused on the details and the more we're really coming from our own um, understanding of truth and our own love for um, something greater than ourselves is really where we where we shine Blessings. Namaste.